Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we have a Roulette Lane public match for you. Thank you to our Patreon members for the support. If you'd like to support, go to the link in the description where you can get a live stream of all the broadcasts we do. You can advertise your regiment on the bottom of our videos and get raw gameplay footage of everything we cover with no commentary and UI. So, glorious Roulette Lane here, about a 150 man server right now. Balances perfect as it always is in the pubs with auto balance being on. Union having 12 on artillery. Confederates don't have artillery on this map. Going through our officers quickly. CSA, you have Rocky B, Go Papa YT, Zane, and that's it. They don't have an officer down the bottom. And then Union, you got Colt, Fred the Red, Ozzy, Clyde, and then artillery. It looks like they don't have an officer. So, Roulette Lane, a pretty CSA bias map, especially on the smaller pop servers. However, last night I saw a match similar to this size on roulette lane and the union just straight up dominated i mean union the server pop overall was maybe 30 more guys and it was just straight domination from the union which is something you never see on roulette lane just because of how biased this map is generally union plan you have the point of contention here your job as union is to hold the snake fence and the rock wall here very simple the problem is, is they don't have enough guys to defend the whole snake fence and stone wall. And that's how the CSA can kind of outmaneuver you on this map. And speaking of the CSA, you see them pushing down to this. They already lost a flag in the river. I don't know how you lose a flag in there, but... You could see the CSA moving off to the left side. And their goal is to break the Union line and get up to the artillery or hold a position on the stone wall. Snake fence doesn't matter as long as you break through. You'll see the CSA like to push up to this defilade here because it's a very good spot. Defilade meaning uh, you're behind some cover in terms of a hill to where the enemy can't see you. Granted, you can't see them either. So you'll see CSA kind of roll up over here, use the defilade as cover, and then rise up, take shots at the Union, and then eventually charge them out. They might just charge the corner as well. Really a lot of options for CSA right now. And we'll see what they do. And it looks like they're going to either go in or use the defilade. Looks like they're going to regroup. This is fascinating, though, that the Union over here are holding a lot of their guys here because it is very traditional CSA strategy to push up this side. So I don't know why you're having your guys go so far to the left. And it, even though the CSA have moved this way, the Union guys on the left are not reacting. They're not reacting, which you can't. You got to react. You got to move because the moment CSA charges the top of the hill here, looks like they're moving now, which is good. And they move in right as CSA is going up. Are they going to try to get flanking shots on the side? They will. It's a big risk because if you have the whole CSA team charging half the Union infantry. And remember, Union infantry is already outnumbered in the first place because they have 10 solo guys on artillery. Oh, we're hitting a little lag spike there. Lags, fall back. Let's see if it pops out of the lag spike here or not. Be right slide, back when boys. it cuts Hold back on. I mean, the audio. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Yeah. Union, uh, it looks like they're kind of getting beat on the side, but it looks like they're uh, running up the flank of the CSA charge. And. So, in the end, uh, this charge here for CSA, uh, it looks like it's bound to fail. They're holding a lot here. They have two flags up here. These Union guys do wipe one flag, and CSA's turning around to face them. Actually, it's looking real good for CSA now. I don't know. It's so, it's so close. CSA's got two flags here, though. Union does not have any flags. They have one flag. Looks like they fell back off of that side. And tickets are down for both sides. More for CSA. That makes a little sense, but... One CSA kind of gains the ground here, which I don't think they're going to now that they've lost both of those flags. Uh, once they gain ground, they'll start being able to deal a fair amount of damage to the Union. So, to my surprise, Union, this group that ran up the flank, dealt some damage, and I'm really surprised that Union held 
that charge off. It looks like Union has formed a case on wall. I don't like a case on wall because it forms a nice defensive line for Union. But the problem is, is that if CSA ever gets control of it, it kills Union chances even more. So, and the biggest reason why I don't like that case on wall on this is because if Union falls back completely, and we saw them do this in the middle of this charge, the only reason why it didn't really have a lasting effect is because this Union group charged at the flank. But if the Union fall back in the middle of a charge or before a charge to this position because they think it's better, you're going to give the CSA a firm position with all their flags on the fence. And... You're not going to win doing that, I don't think. Because the thing is, the CSA can just roll down, get to the stone wall. Because we're going to assume most of the Union is here. And even if half the Union's here and the other half is down here, the whole CSA team can run down the snake fence, hit the stone wall on the left, wipe the half of the Union team that they were facing, and then capture the point and force the Union on this case on wall to charge down at them and try to retake the point. So, I really don't like the case on wall for this. Uh, you have to make a lot of mistakes on CSA for the case on wall on this map to work. Just go on this right side right here. You don't have to up and over. Just go on this right side. Just go on this right side right here. So CSA is starting to move out of their main spawn right now. Takes a few minutes to do that, and the biggest hindrance for the CSA at this point is they do not have any of their flags. All four flags for them are downed. Five minutes for them to despawn. At that point, CSA can respawn in as the flags, but... Uh, what the heck? I didn't even know you could... Okay, yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. I'm like, there's no way you can climb up here. I almost wonder if you can, but it doesn't feel like you can. Jimmy Biggs is going to try to get the flag, but he might pay for it. Oh. He might just be scouting for his team. Barry's here, though, and he's going to expose himself. Misses that first stab. And so they're starting to hold the corner. None in the woods. And it looks like they're going to send some guys to try and save the flag. Maybe they might just charge in right away. CSA is a lot of time, so they don't necessarily have to charge in right now. They could very well just sit back, let the flags despawn, and then go in again. Because on these smaller pop servers, the ticket rate goes down fast enough to where time is not, not really a factor until the attacking team hits their final stage of final push which is the fifth stage they have, and at that point the black timer would drop. You don't really ever see the black timer hit zero on a 150-man server. So CSA run up, they get two of the flags. Looks like they're going to run back. Union pushing out here. Very risky, and they're pulling back. CSA go down to engage now. The thing is, as the Union, there's no strategical advantage to charging this barn unless you're counter-charging after a failed CSA charge. But even then, it's still very risky because as defenders, you're defending. You don't need to push out and risk losing a lot of tickets. Speaking of losing tickets, you have CSA rolling up. They're dying out of line, these guys are. I don't know if an officer told them to go this way, but they're here nonetheless. And they're going to be losing a lot of tickets for their team, which they can't have right now when they're already down a fourth of a morale stage. A fourth of a morale stage for an attacking team being down that much is not the end of the world, but you don't want that to keep growing. I mean, all these guys are dying. I will give you a chance to surrender. I will give you a chance. Hello. There's no surrender in war, son. Hey, calm down, calm down, Billy. Hey, relax. FBI. <laughs> calm down, even though I just shot you friendly. <laughs> so. Oh, looks like they've got the cannons even kind of on the This looks kind of neat, though. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. It looks kind of sick, the four guns. I, they probably have them all preloaded. 
At least I'm guessing. And then once they pop out, they're gonna fire them. Who knows? Looks like the flags for CSA have despawned. And you do have one officer, which is probably why we saw those guys go here. And this is what you can't do with CSA. Now, the union's spreading out into two groups. And you don't want to spread out yourself to deal with that. Because if your defending team is spread up, if they split their team in half in two different areas, why as the attacker would you split yourself up in two different groups and have each group hit? Each individual group on the Union side. That just doesn't make any sense. You need to blob up with all your guys. Defeat the Union in detail. Slam into one of those groups. And then prepare for the next group. And especially with how quick the flag spawns can get back in. Even if you lose a fair amount of guys hitting that first group. And wiping them. You could still respawn them in quickly. And you'll see this a lot of times too. With matches. Uh, I saw it in Maryland campaign recently. I don't know if the Union guys for that round would really like me talking about it but imagine if the union held this whole snake fence right what the csa team csa team did um sorry imagine this <laughs> i i flipped the teams around that's kind of why i got confused so on garland sand csa's defending unions attacking right imagine csa is defending this snake fence and they have the team along the whole snake fence as union Attacking on Garland stand what you should do is you should try to run up to one of the flanks of the CSA defending team Hit him in the side and then just roll over their whole line That's what you should do Instead, what the Union did attacking on Garland stand is they sent like one big line towards the enemy and hit the whole defensive line for CSA at the same time and Union lost pretty dang bad. It was atrocious. It was a brain-dead charges. It didn't look good It wasn't smart and I know that a lot of the Union players uh, we're frustrated with that match. But back to roulette where the Union's defending and not attacking. Uh, this is... I don't know why the Union's pulled off the snake fence. Are they throwing? Union, I don't... CSA's got to realize that Union's not up there. Right, yeah, now they're starting to go... Unions put a lot of their guys over here because of one small CSA group. A lot of CSA distraught uh, and disorganized. The rest of the Union's charging this up. And look at what happened. Because Union's fallen back to this case on wall, the Confederates now have control of the state fence. Uh, and they don't have, they have one flag up here. I don't think CSA should charge in here until they get their flags. And if anything, Maybe go down to the point, but Union's kind of held up well there. But because Union's held up well on the bottom side, you could easily charge around this left side like these few CSA guys are and get some damage. So CSA starting to form up the snake fence. They're also starting to push down to the corner. You have Zane there right now. And so CSA's got three flags up there right now respawning the guys and don't know where that fourth flag is. A lot of CSA guys reforming. How are they on the roof? I mean, they got a really nice view of the battlefield. But it's really about it. CSA flag is down. They need to pick that up. So we'll see what CSA it looks like. They're backing off. They've gotten pretty shot up pretty badly here. Uh, looks like Union Artillery and the flags. Uh, the flags weren't able to spawn enough guys in, and the Union was able to outshoot them with artillery and infantry. So that's a very good job on their part. And I know if Union wins this, uh, I'm going to get some comments mentioning the case on wall working. I, I don't think it works if you have a good CSA attack. And I mean, CSA still have control of the snake fence corner. They're just down reforming the guys. And if CSA, if these guys went up to the left side and they just pushed around here, they're going to take some casualties, but that's the best way you're going to get at the Union. Alright, 
Alright, man. So basically, just like hold. Do you want us to hold for now? So they're doing yes. pop up volleys. I get why they're doing it. You want to minimize casualties, as you can hear. But the problem is, is when your enemy's holding a spot and you run up on the hill, a lot of the guys running up the hill are probably going to run too far forward. It just happens a lot. I mean, I do it myself. Where you run too far forward and then the team that is receiving this pop up volley sees a lot of your character and can hit you very quickly because those guys are steady unlike yourself you're running up your sway is going to be a little off they're not going to charge the fence csa as a team has to lob up and charge one specific spot And looks like they're going to do their first pop of volley here. And, oh, I guess that's not a pop of volley. Oh, I guess they are. It's just not as uh, a smooth or clear as you would expect. A lot of guys stayed up there longer than expected. <laughs> But the longer the CSA just kind of plants themselves in these spots, artillery is going to get more and more accurate. They're already hitting shots, but they're going to get way more accurate. And you're just going to get torn to shreds. Artillery is very good at knocking you down, making you suppressed, making you a little confused and dazed and just shocked for a second or two. But on these smaller sized servers, when you have companies for the CSA splitting up as they are, artillery is going to get enough kills where it actually affects you. And it doesn't help as well that you have guys up here for CSA out and about skirmishing. I don't know if this is their design plan, but it's definitely not helping any uh, movement or attempt of a charge on that front. I mean, all these guys are out here. The it just This just shows me that the organization for CSA is pretty poor. Really poor. And that is a shame. It's either the officers aren't coordinating good enough or look they got a third guy up there. It's either the officers aren't coordinating or the guys just aren't listening. Which is really surprising because normally CSA on pubs is very good. Uh, they win a majority of the time. You just team killed somebody. Hey, Jimmy, I'll remember. No wonder we're fucking losing, innit? <laughs> yeah, for real, we're killing each other. Yeah, whoever said, no wonder we're losing, yep. CSA just looks completely destroyed. I saw a match where, a public match on Smokestacks, it should be up on YouTube, uh, where the Union team did everything wrong. Well, this is the CSA team doing everything wrong. This is the rebuttal, if you want to call it that, by the by the union. So this is quite unfortunate. Now, these guys rambling up here, uh, really bad for their team. Union's almost up a whole morale stage. But as defenders, you can't have out of lines. You can't be risking that. You just can't. And a lot of these guys out here are dying out of line. I'm really intrigued to see how many out of lines we'll get at the end of the match. I think it's going to be a significant account. Significant amount. So. so some of these Colts trying to shift his guys over. No, no, no. That's a, that's a. They got a nice uh, angle here of the CSA guys up, up here. Up. But you do, you have like Rocky here who's trying to. Okay, he's returning to the main line, which is good. Two CSA officers, the Zane's guys up here? Nope. The crazy part about all this is CSA can still win the match. Because Union will eventually hit breaking, they might be in Final push or late breaking the CSA, but three artillery shots and two kills. I mean, they're just shooting right through. 
Uh, so Union's up there flanking. Why is there a Confederate flag over here? Some Confederate rambles are dealing with the Union rambles. Th these encounters are great for CSA. Because CSA have more tickets than the Union. So auto line trades are going to be in favor of the attacking team. That Union flag pulling off. And that's the thing. This flag that... Where's the flag go? Maybe this is a Confederate officer. Maybe this is Zane guys or Rocky. I don't know, but... Uh, no officer is leading this coordinated push over here, if you even want to call it coordinated. Company A, move it over here, move it over here. We're going to charge the cabin area. Let's go. And Union's going to charge in here right away. And I mean, these Union guys should win this, and it should hit TSA into breaking, and now it's almost a whole new round stage. Shoot me, shoot me. I want my pistol ammo back. <laughs> Open up. Yeah, that kill right there from Ozzy. All right, thanks, Jets. Getting the CSA down to breaking, and this is really a shame. I mean, server numbers up to 190 now. Uh, inbounds five in favor of CSA with 12 artillery. It just got to six. It's 18 man infantry in balance. 18 men. There should be no reason why the CSA is doing this badly. No reason. And they've started to shift their attention down to this Union group on the bottom side. Just in a shootout, but eventually artillery, with how close this is, artillery is going to start turning these guns. And it is not going to work out for the CSA. Union shots have been good this round, so... Maybe. And any second to surely this email for him. There we go. If the CSA charges up the hill, I'm gonna be annoyed. Okay, they're charging the right. I can appreciate that. So, uh, it's the best spot to charge, if anything. They're going through point. I don't think they're cap, uh, gonna cap, but this is a poor charge. Look how spread out they are. Half the line's not even charging in, but we'll see how it does nonetheless. Oh yeah, wow, all the CSA didn't charge here. This is, uh... They're charging, get ready! Not... Again, I love the idea. The execution is absolutely terrible. And it can be hard for... Uh, in pub matches, anyways, to organize the charges. Just because the officer will say, okay, we're charging, we're charging, go. And then the officer starts running away. And it takes a second or two for the orders to be heard by the men. They might be reloading, they might be aiming. And so this slowly turns into a very spread out trickle charge. And so based on what I've seen and heard from people, good officers in the game, you got to constantly repeat your orders. You got to say, okay, we're charging in 30 seconds. Okay, we're charging in 15 seconds, 10 seconds, 5 seconds, go. Look at that canister shot. I got like six guys there. So. And so the problem is. Oh, actually, just to see what they're saying. Like, unfortunately, Danny Boy's voice is not very commanding. So, you could see uh, a voice. 
is such a huge thing in pubs. If you're an officer, you a officer has to either have a very iconic voice, which there are a few people that have that, but you also got to be very loud as an officer. That's why I uh, have an officer a whole lot. If you if you ever see me officering, I will be yelling and talking even faster and, and more aggressively than what I do for the commentary. Just because that's what you have to do for people to listen to you and hear you. See, see, that is called poor communication among officers. And originally, War of Rights had two officers in the game per side, but as the server sizes increased, they changed it from two to four officers. And proponents of the this was a bad change is the example in front of us is why it's a bad change. Three officers there we saw. One wants to charge the artillery, one wants to stay and shoot, the other wants to charge the orchard. They don't agree. They're not sitting and talking about it. And that can be an issue with pubs too is there's no really a pre-planning stage. The pre-planning stage as the devs I think have mentioned is when everyone spawns in getting their bayonets or reloads at the beginning of the match. It gives you about a minute. But in the middle of the match, it can be very chaotic. So even if four people are in charge, they either all have to agree on a plan or all have to follow somebody. It's, it can be difficult. And so, CSA is about to force the Union into breaking, but Union is about to force the CSA into final push. And so that's why you see Union collapsing on the point, because CSA almost just capped it and won the game. Which I wasn't even looking at that, but CSA don't deserve to win this game, so thankfully Union took the bottom side here. I think that's the I think that's the cool part and the bad part about pubs. We'll get to that in a second. But Union's counter charging, trying to hit CSA to final push to see the black timer. You have to drop down to 235, and Union just has to hold out for two and a half minutes, and they will win the game. Keep going, keep going, guys. Tyrion shot almost hitting their own guys. It may have killed one or so, but. Union is just gonna sweep through the whole CSA. I mean, server pops up to 200 now. That's one thing I don't know is I've I've mentioned that the based on the server pop, the ticket scale. Some CSA are charging, but it's really scattered out. There's no officer there. There is a flag. But tickets scale. So the higher pop server, each death is worth less tickets. So I really wonder if the server pop gets bigger over a match, if the tickets scale to that or not. But they probably don't. But who knows. Really, the last CSA hope is on this side. Some trying to charge the artillery, but this is just complete mess. 1.30 left on the clock. We fucked your cousin, too. We need to this line back a little bit. Yeah, what a wife for me. And that's a good and bad thing about pubs is strategies that sometimes don't work in private events work in pubs because of the chaos sometimes in pubs. Like CSA just almost won the match and they don't deserve the win. So some people may, might be like, oh, that's a good way to win a CSA. Um, so. But a pub is a great place to learn to make mistakes and still win the games. 45 seconds left, and CSA hasn't been wiped here. A lot of Union holding back. The point, if you don't know, goes all the way up to kind of here-ish. Uh, so Union can sit way back there and still keep the point capped, which is kind of wild. One, wish, one thing I wish the spectators had, which is the ability to see the outline of the point of contention. So Union counter-charging the remnants of the Confederates here. 
And they might hit last stand. Actually, they're not going to. 10 seconds on that clock. And this was a very good win on Union's part. We won anyways. This was more of anything a consequence of poor CSA play than a consequence of good Union play. The CSA never really did anything to wow me in terms of their attacking strategy. Now, if they each kept charging uh, throughout the match as one big blob, as one organization, if they weren't spread out as much as they were, especially in that orchard, I would say that was a very good Union win, but very poor Confederate play. So, But besides all that, uh, you get that in pubs sometimes, and you know, it is what it is. We show all of it here, the good, the bad, so you can watch and learn and hopefully just enjoy some War of Rights commentary. But anyways, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you want to support the channel more, check out the description where we have our Patreon. On there, we live stream all the broadcasts we do. You can advertise your regiment on the bottom of our videos and get raw gameplay footage of everything we cover with no commentary and UI. But besides all that, I hope you enjoyed. We have our Discord merch in the description as well, and we will see you in the next one. Have a wonderful rest of your night. Look at the CSA out of lines, 160. Wow, we.